right. Hello everybody, welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I'm going to be demoing a watercolor painting. It's going to be an imaginary scene. I think uh, today's focus is going to be on um, kind of maybe more of an interior stream. And I'm also going to be experimenting more with phthalo blue. Kind of use, utilizing it to uh, mix darks with my earth tones. So that's my goal for today. And in addition to that, I'm also um, going to focus on maybe painting a little bit more detail. So rather than doing the uh, typical maybe like 25 minute, 30 minute painting, this one will probably push more along the lines of um, maybe 45 minutes. Just making sure all the lighting is looking good. I think everything's good. Okay, so. I'm going to prep everything and talk about the palette. In front of me is a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua. Um, it is 11 by 15, 140% um, 140 pound cold press and 100% cotton. And I'm just saturating with this with water and while it soaks that up and stretches, I'll kind of adjust the palette. Now, I'm talking about phthalo blue here, and I've had this phthalo blue on my palette for well over a year now. The tube busted, and it was a small tube, I think Van Gogh brand, and it's been on there for over a year. A little bit of phthalo blue goes a really long way. It's a really strong mixer. I think, and I guess don't quote me on this, I believe the pigment came out in 1930s, 1940s. I think it's the original um, Windsor Blue is what they called it. Uh, but regardless, uh, Thala Blue is what we're going to utilize. Um, I started utilizing it after reading James Fletcher Watson, a watercolor painter who has quite a few books out. He's deceased now. But um, he was a very, very good painter, and um, I highly recommend looking at his books. And that's uh, James Fletcher Watson. Let's see. So he, from what I remember, he would um, mix that with his earth tones to get a darker green or a brownish green. So that's the way I'm going to um, probably utilize it. I'm going to put out some fresh burnt sienna and burnt umber, and then we should be good palette wise. And I believe I mentioned the focus of this one is going to be the interior of probably the interior stream type look, something I haven't done in a while. So it's going to be probably a little bit more detailed and um, you know, just playing around having fun, but taking it a little bit more serious. Okay, so make sure our paper is nice and saturated. And then we'll get started. You know, we might even wind up utilizing some um, white or black gouache, or maybe even um, Titan Buff or Buff Titanium. Different brands have different names for it. All right, paper's fairly stretched. This is the Medium Ron Ranson Hake. They're kind of pre-worn, even though this one's pretty raggedy. It's, it's been used for two or three years now. And let's jump into it. I think I'm going to grab just a light mix of ultramarine. I accidentally caught a little bit of Payne's Gray, but that's fine. I'll have a very light background. A 
Light Washer Paints uh, Ultramarine. Grab a little bit of raw sienna. Spill above the horizon line. Kind of just um, planning out the composition where I want the background to be. Put a raw sienna in there. One thing that I've been thinking about lately, I think sometimes I'm inadvertently painting on the back of the sheet of the uh, Stonehenge Aqua. I'm not sure how, honestly, how to tell sometimes with some brands of paper, the front and the back. But it feels like this one is different where I've been painting on the back. I'm not sure. Anyway, so we have that out. Now I'm going to use, I'll just grab a little bit of Payne's Gray, kind of just almost as a sketching tool for me to plan out how I want this interior to look. So the stream edge, we'll have it open up to us. like that. When we'll work our way back to front. And we'll stay mainly wet and wet, I believe. I haven't kind of done something in this style in a while, even though it is fast and loose and using the same hake, generally the same um, palette. It's just like kind of just a slightly different approach to it. So I'm going to start things off with our typical ultramarine blue and light red oxide. And this will be for the concept of far, far distant. Let some of that light shine through. But some of the stuff we won't even see at the end of the painting. Okay. I'm going to alternate with the rigor. And I'm going to put in wet and wet tree trunks. Here, I really don't need to worry about like directional or shape or um, spacing. They're going to soften up, they're going to mellow out, and uh, kind of blend into the surroundings. So it's essentially just layering is what I'm doing here. And after having that background, I'm then going to use linear perspective. I'm going to kind of just draw a line just to show you what I'm talking about. Things that are a little bit closer are going to sit a little bit lower on that horizon. They may be a little bit um, darker in value. They may be a little bit greener. So that'd be atmospheric perspective, greener or yellower. And I'm going to put in my next layer. Right now I'm just sticking with the ultramarine blue and the light red oxide. I mentioned James Fletcher Watson. He would use this mixture as a distance for the purples. Um, Ron Ranson would use that as well. But I believe, unless he had a sky painting, sky paintings would sometimes have cerulean blue in it. Ultramarine blue is kind of the, the blue that Ron Ranson utilized. All right, so building up a little bit more so it's a little bit darker in value a lot of the stuff I originally put down just got covered up however I feel that you know I'm building up a scene that I'm creating an illusion to myself and and that just just helps to have everything there here you can see just those few little lines popping through Anyway, grabbing a little bit of those, this darker mixture. 
but you can keep that same idea of just putting those brief suggestions in and that they're going to soften up. I grabbed a little bit of Payne's Gray right there. That guy looks darker, but it will lighten up, but it will be kind of um, a little stark contrast. But ultimately here, I'm just thinking I want to have another line of the tree trunks and branches. Now, just to continue with the theme of linear perspective, as we get lower, the next line might start about here. And I'm just kind of drawing that in for y'all to see where I'm basing it off of. Let's um, do some raw sienna and ultramarine for our mix. This is my next layer of foliage. I get a variety in how it's sitting over everything. You can even grab a little bit of Payne's Gray and start putting some tonal variety within this. And that's the cats playing with each other. Now, I think on the next line of um, foliage, I'll play around with um, the thallo blue. These guys are a little too blue. building up this darker spot. I am um, unfortunately not even thinking about shadows and reflections. I'm so focused on that. Like I said, I haven't painted in this approach in a while. And you know with painting, I think especially with videos and whatnot, you want to remain positive and uh, encouraging, you know. But I do feel that, you know, if I don't use it, I lose it or it takes me a little bit to get back into it. So I'm taking those colors and I'm putting just the illusion of reflection over water. We'll build up those darkness in that. One thing that I'm a big fan of that I know I haven't done this in a while because I say I'm a big fan of taking Payne's Gray and putting it along the edge of water but I haven't said that in a long time so I haven't painted something like this in quite a while I'm gonna bring the land mass right here just to break up the uh, split down the middle I grab a little bit of uh, raw sienna just to liven things up. I'll even put some raw sienna down for uh, grass for the ground. Okay, so we have our little bend, we have our reflections coming down, we have our distant trees, everything's still wet and wet. Um, I don't know how well it shows up on the camera, so let me tilt it, see if we can catch a little glare on the paper, just so you can see what stage it's at wet-wise. Now, um, we're going to move over towards Payne's Gray. Uh, sorry, I don't know why I said Payne's Gray, because I was washing the brush and I had Payne's Gray on it. 
over towards Thalo Blue. So Thalo Blue has just like this bright blueness to it. Um, I think also historically people will use Thalo Blue as a replacement for um, Prussian Blue. I have Prussian Blue there, but I just don't want to wet it out. I don't know how well it'll show up. But Thalo Blue, very strong. When I mix it with the raw sienna, you do get a greenish aspect to it. And we'll use that for our next layer of trees. I need a thicker concentration of pigment so that I don't get back runs in cauliflowers. Um, I don't have it mixed perfectly and I'm not applying it perfectly, but that will help, you know, just the whole illusion of, you know, spending time to get that texture there where you're, you're really not, we're just kind of dabbing it in. And people who sit there and paint every single uh, leaf, I applaud you. I don't have that talent. Um, I unfortunately don't have that patience as well. So meticulous painters, um, that's just really awesome that you guys um, have that skill. I just, I just don't have it in me. So that's um, the Thalo Blue with raw sienna, and it was wet and wet. I'm putting another layer of trunks in. I'm still going thin with these. These guys, I'm going to kind of ground in place. You can see where I drew that line for y'all. Um, kind of scratched up the paper a little bit, but it's fine. Let's now do raw sienna, uh, burnt sienna into this mix. Just like straight from the tube burnt sienna. And we can see we get a darker value. We're still wet and wet, so it's still uh, diffusing. We'll do a tree or two at the end. That will be um, on top of the dry paper. And we'll do our three mixtures so we can see that as well. So I'm gonna do a little bit of scraping. I'm gonna pull sideways with this card the trunks. I could also scrape up in this fashion. Get a little texture going on. So establishing the kind of that this layer is at this realm, um, linear perspective wise. And then any trees, I could do a dark accent tree in that level, or the next trees could be lower. I also do need to bring some of this color into the water. Uh, painting water when it's wet and wet really just, just helps out. Um, here's that mixture. I'm using it for the darks right there, for landmass to kind of break up the um, left to right symmetry. Not sure if we use, we did use a little bit of this here. Guys, what y'all doing? I think there's a cat by my feet. There it is. Guys, I feel like knocking stuff down. Oh, and if you found about the channel a lot, you know that I've been talking about all the hurricanes that have been coming through. There's another storm that's looking to enter the Gulf after the Caribbean, uh, Ada, and um, 
unfortunately, I don't think it's gotten a lot of attention due to um, the election and whatnot, but I think it did a lot of damage down in, um, I think it was Honduras, Guatemala area. Um, not exactly sure, but they, they just haven't really, no news source really talked about it, like BBC News and whatnot. So but building up the dark values here, I inadvertently created two openings. We have three openings here, but it makes it look interesting. Let's um, now start establishing, well, we didn't do burnt umber. So burnt umber with the blue is gonna give me my darkest. probably see even though we're going wet and wet we do get a nice brownish dark from that and I'll use that kind of like how I use the darks in the corner of a tonal painting that's when we were like wiping back and forth with the watercolor uh, with the paper towel I'll use that to kind of choke in the sides of the painting Now, I'm going to do a dry off at this point. Um, I can scrape a little bit first. I'm going to dry off and we'll put in our some closer foliage and trees. So if you're following along and you have headphones on, take them off so you don't get your ears all um, blown out. All right, blow dryer. So everything so far was done wet and wet. Now we're going to utilize um, kind of the ability to, to paint a little bit darker um, values. So I'm going to make some paints gray right into this. I'm just going to mark out where I want the base of my trees just to kind of come up with an idea. Do a tree, tree, tree. Just have a, like a nice rhythm to it. And maybe have like a foreground tree really close. Um, with these, we can do foliage first or you can do trunk first, whatever way you prefer. This one, do a thinner tree here. So this is the number one rigger. And I'm just working in a fashion where it's kind of calligraphy strokes, letting it move and have kind of a life of its own. Bring down a little bit of reflection here. This guy, I'm becoming, uh, there's too much symmetry taking place, but so I'll break it up by having a thicker trunk right here and the thicker trunk will have kind of a partner tree coming off and we get those reflections down here you don't have to do every single reflection Now 
Now, kind of lighting up the mix. My goal is to put these guys in and let it dry some and utilize that value shift that'll take place in order to let them recede in the painting. Let's grab some light red oxide. I'll mix in a little bit of phthalo blue. Feels good to use phthalo blue. It's been a while. I think uh, what got me was I hang my paintings in the house, um, not in a narcissistic fashion, but in a fashion of, you know, sometimes I, I genuinely like it. Um, sometimes I'll have put it in a frame and I'll have run out of room on the floor for a frame, so it'll be hanging on the wall. Though, since my fiance moved in, a lot of my um, stuff on the wall has been coming down and um, she has been decorating as the seasons go by. And currently she is switching from Halloween to Christmica, Christmas Hanukkah. Anywho, um, I had one of my paintings up on the wall and I was looking at it and I was like, I've been doing so much experimentation with the painting that I haven't done anything a little bit more meticulous. And by meticulous, I mean a painting in this style. This is still super fast and loose, but it's a little bit more um, structured, a little bit more detailed than uh, the experimental paintings that I've been doing. So I was just like, oh, you know, it's been quite a while. Let me, let me try that out. I'm going to bring up another tree here. One thing to keep in mind is uh, whenever you're painting, I like to paint to the edges. So not only do I like to paint background that might not show through at all. I mean, we have just a little image of our initial creation. I like to paint to the edges so that it doesn't seem kind of dead center, the image, even though this one probably will be with our the symmetry. Um, underneath a mat, it would go to about here. And if you look at a lot of the landscape painters from the 1800s, Hudson River Valley painters, well, mainly oil painters, but they have watercolors in there. They have a lot of stuff that will come in from the side and whatnot. So I'm just trying to keep that in mind. This guy grounds a little bit more. I'm just taking that rigor there. This is fun. I'm so glad that um, I had a chance today to paint. Um, work was was good. Had a lot of like internet issues and power out issues, like issues stuff like that. So um, there's a lot of stuff going on at work. It was a good day, but I got home and um, you probably saw like a video that I randomly posted to my channel of um, me skateboarding. I've been working on this thing called uh, surf skate where you use the kind of rotation of your feet, the pumping of your feet to get the board to move rather than pushing with your feet. And um, I hadn't skateboarded in years and I never used this style or even knew about this style or approach it as you know, different equipment for it. And you know, I thought, you know, what a good way, fun way to exercise, you know, get back into exercising. So I did some of that when I got home and uh, now I'm here painting. Okay, so raw sienna and phthalo blue.
here I try to minimize the amount of water on the brush because it'll splay out too much. That'll give you an idea of this brush stroke right here, how much water is actually there, quite a, it, quite a bit. So I had to be very ginger with putting that in. Okay, so that's um, our raw sienna with the thalla blue. See there, it's splayed out. Bring it in on the side. We'll bring some closer foliage coming in. We'll switch over to a more burnt sienna mix. So burnt sienna, thalo blue. So hopefully these colors are showing up or at least inspiring you to, um, to run the gambit of thalo blue with your um, earth tones. Light dry brush. Some darks. I'm getting a little glare, so I'm having to move around a little bit. Let's scrape some textures in here. We do need to now at least get a little bit of um, burnt umber mixed. Burnt umber with phthalo blue. So a tube of phthalo blue will last you a really long time. I think, I think there, there might be like a, like a slight um, I don't want to say health risk with it but I think just like in, in insane copious amounts, they might have discovered something. Um, or somebody had told me that on the side, but I really haven't seen anything bad about it. Um, I don't even know why I'm bringing that up. Um, so Thala Blue. Fun. Oh, oh, because I was thinking um, if the cheaper brands like the Van Gogh or uh, Cotman, they, it's not a synth, uh, it's a synthetic. It's not, it'd be the same thing that's in a tube for a uh, professional line, probably just in a higher quantity. In fact, if you were oil painting, I think with my oil paints, I have a phthalo blue as a student grade. And then the other paints as artist grade just because of how strong the thallows are. Same thing with thallow green. All right, so I think we had talked about putting a big tree structure here. So we'll do that. Let me do a little dry off. So, 
clean this up. Also, uh, thalo blue is a staining pigment, so I, I think it's difficult to lift, but I don't really use much lifting, so kind of wipe off here. Let's grab some burnt. Uh, raw sienna, kind of liven things up. This will be for my foreground tree that I'm going to bring up the side. Maybe I'm going to grab some light red oxide. Since it's opaque, the light red oxide, or it has an opacity to it, I could easily put it up in front just to kind of create that screen. I'm going to use the number four rigger just because it's a little bit thicker and putting a trunk in won't be as tedious than with the number one. I'm mixing burnt umber with thalo blue. Should take a little bit of this, put, put it down for the falling foliage. You even have a grouping that's coming closer on this side. And then I just grab some raw sienna from there. You could grab the number one rigger. Now, one thing I alluded to earlier, but I keep on stepping away from doing it. Okay, here's a lighter mix. I watered down the mix, and I want it to dry lighter for these branches. And then I'm going to come back over with a darker mix to get a depth to this one. Could even take a few dark, so here's going to be dark, dark. A few trees shooting up in a grouping right here. different textured foliage what type of tree that is no idea just having fun we watched a movie uh, the night going into Halloween it's called the ritual it took place in like Sweden or something like that and then you're in the woods and a lot of the old I guess they were like pines I'm not sure what type of trees they were, but they had very pointy structures coming off of it like that, which is pretty interesting. I 
Okay, so this area dried up a little bit, so I'm gonna grab just some paints gray as a convenience dark. And I'm gonna grab, make my dark mix again for darker tree branches. So I said the lighter tree branches, which will dry light, and darker tree branches to kind of weave in and out and come closer. You might even put a fallen, yeah, let's put a fallen branch too. So a fallen branch, and that's what I'm gonna grab the buff titan for. So that's the grass growing around it. It's got its shadow cast. Let's see. So the buff titan, I'm not exactly sure what it is. Um, Daniel Smith brand is very famous for theirs. I don't have theirs. Um, I think Miss Jane Blundell, um, a watercolorist, talks about um, this a lot, this pigment, but from Daniel Smith. Uh, so I'm not sure what theirs is, but this is PW6 and PBR7. Um, PW6 is a white, I'm not sure which one, and then PBR7, we'll have to look that up. But in my oil paints, I have a, I think I have a buff titan or unbleached titanium. And I think that's like a pure unbleached titanium there, but here it's a mixture to achieve this uh, creamy color. Um, this is nice. to use for, I find, dead branches and stuff like that. I don't use it often, and then I go on kicks where I use it. But you can kind of get like nice little highlights. It's kind of like a gouache. I don't think it's as opaque as the gouache, but I really do enjoy it, and um, washes of it are pretty uh, as well. We're just using it for some dead branch. So I haven't uh, mentioned it yet, but um, I also thought about doing something more meticulous like this as a kind of um, celebration. I'm almost at a thousand subscribers on YouTube. So I would love for you to consider liking and subscribing. Also, if you ever have any questions or comments or suggestions, you know, please let me know. If there's ever anything you want me to cover or try to cover, let me know. I'm gonna dot this in just to like kind of accentuate this tree while I ramble. Um, I do have a Patreon account, which you can uh, check out and support me on. I have two really cheap tiers so that they, um, you know, aren't, you know, a burden. But um, if you don't want to, you know, if you're not into that type of thing, I, I understand. You know, if you're not able to or, or don't want to, I understand. There's no um, pressure there. And it just helps with uh, supplies and whatnot. So, um... Also, I do have some exclusive content on there for, you know, it's kind of a thank you for people that support me with that. But um, there's tons and tons of free videos that I have up on YouTube.
and you're always welcome to follow any tutorial and anything that you follow along with if somebody is ever like hey I'd like to, to buy that from you you have my express permission to um, you know, sell anything that you've done from a tutorial of mine it's kind of little highlights just to make it interesting kind of almost pushing it towards uh, who's that guy this is the season of um, Christmas. What's his name? Thomas Kincaid. I know uh, recently Joe Menza was doing a lot of studying of Thomas Kincaid and um, his different approaches. I have to ask Joe if he's still following that. By the way, if you like this type of painting, uh, Joe Menza has a YouTube channel and he has a lot of free tutorials as well. Um, other artists, David Usher, uh, Stephen Cronin, I haven't mentioned him in a while. Um, Lois Davidson, uh, Matthew Clemens, I believe has some videos up on his channel. Um, you know, there's a lot of different painters to check out. I think, uh, I think I'm gonna stop the painting here Let's do a final dry off. We'll put a mat over it. We'll sign it. We'll see how everything looks. don't want to sign with white we'll find a little place right in here to put it so it looks a little dark on the camera um, a little bit lighter in person. I'm not sure why it's looking so dark today. Maybe it's the time change, right? All right, there you go. I hope you enjoyed. Um, and I'll talk to you all soon. Have a great day. Bye.